There are lots of cool things you can do in the new Minecraft 1.19.4 snapshot, and one of those things is animations and interpolation. So for example, we can make this smoothly get bigger and then smaller again, or smoothly rotate around like that. Now, if I show you what I've done with the rotation, this might look a little bit weird and difficult to understand, and that is because rotating display entities in Minecraft uses something called quaternions. Now, I'm not going to explain what quaternions are in this video, I might do a separate video on that, but basically, they're numbers which define rotation. If you, if you kind of mess with them a little bit, they can do some really weird and wacky stuff. Because despite describing rotation, they actually describe more than that. They can scale as well, meaning that most of the time you're going to try to write a quaternion and it's just going to end up, especially if you try to do something like this, then you're going to end up getting really big really quick. Also, if you want to apply an animation to it, you need to do something like this, and then if you actually want to play the animation, you have to do that, and then if you want to change a different property, then you have to set it again, and so on. So that's why I made a small data pack library that allows you to apply as many animations as you want to a display entity at a time, and you don't have to have it snap before you play the animation. All you need to do is run data modify storage, and then whichever function you're doing, I'm just going to show you generic, and with generic you set the animation property to be an object, and in here you can specify duration, and then you specify all of the different transformations you want to do. So let's set the transformation to be scale 1, 2, 3, and then we can translate it 1, 2, 3, and let's give it a shadow radius of 3, and then if we run the function, the function name will always be the same as the storage name, so if we run this, then it won't work, because we need to execute as all item displays, run the function, and there you go. It did the animation. So that is just generic, so that allows you to apply multiple animations at a time and specify the duration all at the same time. Now let's have a look at the some of the other ones. So for example, uh, translate and scale both do just translation and scaling. So for example, again we set the animation property and then we can set the duration, again, the x, the y, and the z, and then again, as the entities, we run the scale function, and that is going to do some really weird stuff. Well, that's good and all, but it's not actually that tricky to just set the properties and run the interpolation, just like that. But here's where we get into the really useful feature of this library, the rotation. So, again, it's all the same. Let's say we want to rotate around the x-axis 83, 27, and then if we run the rotate function, let's just run left rotation, they're the same for all intents and purposes, and there you go, it rotated it by, well, okay, kind of difficult to tell because of the stretch factor, so let's maybe change that back, but there you can see better that it rotated it. Let's just put all this back to normal so you can see it properly. There you go, that's the default. And if we watch this closely, it should rotate quite a lot around the x-axis, not so much around the y. And so yeah, so you can see there that it's followed the exact things we specified, but if we get the transformation property on there, you'll see that the left rotation, which is the one we set, is just a bunch of seemingly random numbers, and that's because the library actually has a built-in xyz rotation to quaternion function, so if we can see that here, if you look under maths, then xyz to quaternion, this one actually isn't animation, this one is called target, and obviously the duration doesn't matter, but if we modify that, and then we run the function xyz to quaternion, and then we get the xyz to quaternion output, you can see that, well yeah, it matches the thing, because it basically converted the angles we gave it into a quaternion, and it makes sure that it doesn't stretch it in any weird ways, and keeps it to the same scale. So I'm definitely planning on adding more stuff to this library, just wanted to make a quick video to let you know about it, so you can use this quaternion converter. I'm probably going to add an inverse of that function, where you can turn quaternions back into the XYZ components like that, and let me know if there are any other features that you would like to see me add, because I want to make this data pack as useful as possible. Oh, and the download link's in the description.